I am going to be doing my July wrap up today and I'm really excited to go through these books that I read because I did have a really good reading month in terms of calibre of books that I read. I didn't have so much of a great reading book in terms of the volume of books that I read. If you've seen my previous wrap ups I do tend to read between like 10-15 books a month. I read seven this month. <laughs> I've just had a really busy month and I haven't been able to read as much as I would like to. I haven't been consuming my normal amount of books, but I'm here to go through the books that I did read in July. And it's gonna be a short snappy one, to be honest, because again, seven books. I only have seven books to talk about. I have compiled my little stack here again. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I read a book on, yeah, I read a book on Kindle as well. So I have six books here. I have five books here. <laughs> And we're just gonna get into it because I wanna make this short and snappy and try not to waffle too much as I am prone to do. So let's just, let's just start, let's get into it. I also apologize in advance if you can hear the like <laughs> creaking of this chair. It's old, it's rickety. We're gonna move past it. Just if you hear it, no you didn't, it's fine. Okay, so the first book that I read this month is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. I read this for my TBR takedown video, which is a series in which I choose three books off of my physical TBR and I read them in a reading vlog with you guys in order to try and get through my physical TBR because I have quite a lot. Well, I'm actually lying. I don't have that much on my physical TBR, but I don't like to have a lot on my physical TBR because it stresses me out. So I'm trying to get through it. I think I started the year with about 50 on my physical TBR and I'm down to, I think like 41 or something because I do tend to buy books at the same rate that I read them. But we're trying to get around that. We're trying to get through my physical TBR so that I feel like I can buy more books. That's the be all and end all. I just want to be able to buy more books. Anyway, tangent aside, I read Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter for my TBR takedown video that I did in July and this was fine. <laughs> I feel like I read this so long ago so I don't know if my thoughts are going to be very coherent but I gave this three stars. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, I found the main character to be annoying which tends to happen in a lot of romance books for me. I just really don't like main characters that come across as like childish or like a pick me girl do you know what i mean that sounds really awful when i word it like that but i hope you know what i mean i just don't like childish main characters in romance books because i feel like it doesn't gel especially when you're doing a spicy romance book that doesn't work for me but yeah this follows our main character whose name i have forgotten but she ends up moving in with her brother because she goes through a load of mishaps essentially that means that she can't live in her apartment anymore and so she moves in with her brother and her brother happens to have a roommate that is like this guy that she fancied when she was younger. Her brother ends up basically never being around so she's essentially a roommate of this guy and they hang out. They form a relationship. That is about it and that was one of my main issues with this book is that it didn't have any depth whatsoever. I feel like they went into a relationship with no build up. I don't need a slow burn. I don't need a slow burn but I do need to feel like they want to be together, which I didn't get in this book. I feel like there was just no, there was no tension or build up or anything. They went from like naught to 100, essentially disliking each other to being together. But you didn't see that development on the page. So I just didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. I'm missing like a really key part of this plot. It's called Mr. Wrong Number because our love interest ends up texting her and they end up sort of starting up a relationship via text without knowing who's who. He texts the wrong number, it happens to be her, but they don't know that it's each other. Does that make sense? I tried to explain that in my vlog as well and I feel like I miss the mark every time I try and explain that because I can't word it correctly but I hope you know what I mean. That's another part of this plot which is again relatively short-lived and not in much depth. Anyway I gave this three stars. I feel like I'm listing off all the reasons that I hated this book but I didn't hate it. It was fine. It just wasn't great. So do with that what you will. The next book again was one I read for my TBR takedown video and that is The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. I really didn't think that I would love this book. Okay, let me preface this in the fact that I loved The Soulmate Equation with all of my being. I read that basically as soon as it came out, I wanna say, and I gave it five stars. And that has been a five star favorite in my heart for a very long time. And I have read a lot of Christina Lauren books since, and I haven't loved them. And so I got this book again as soon as it came out because it is kind of a sequel or companion book to The True Love Experiment, to, to The Soulmate Equation. <laughs> It's a companion book to The Soulmate Equation. And I just thought, I don't want to get my hopes up because I loved the first book and if this doesn't live up to it, I'm gonna be really upset. And I also haven't liked a few of their other books that they've done recently. This was five stars. This was five stars. I really, really loved this. It took me a hot minute to sort of get that five star feeling. It wasn't an off the bat five stars. And I think I said that in my vlog. The first like 30% I was like, okay, and what? Okay, and what? 
but believe me, it's phenomenal. I adored this. In this one, we essentially follow our main character who is a romance author. It's dual point of view, so it's told from her point of view, as well as Connor's point of view, who is the love interest. And he is a TV producer who has essentially been tasked with coming up with a premise for a TV show that's a little bit more, I guess, more like reality. He tends to do documentaries and he's been tasked with doing some sort of like love-based reality show. And he's not happy about it, but he is aware of our other main character. What's her name? Fizzy. Her name is Fizzy, <laughs> which is Felicity, but it's Fizzy. So Fizzy is a romance author, as I said, and he ends up reaching out to her in order to do this TV show based around, I guess, finding true love, uh, because he thinks that she would be a really good fit. And we follow, I guess, their relationship. So she goes on to this show, obviously, with the intention of dating one of the men that she meets on this reality show. But it is a romance between him, the producer, and her as the main character. And I think it was really cute. I will not give spoilers, obviously, but I do want to say that it is relatively quick in terms of how they get into their relationship, but it works. It works. I don't like insta-love, and I don't think it is insta-love, but they definitely get together at a quicker rate than you would expect. But because of the plot line, it works. It works. And I said that in my vlog and I feel like I explained it better in my vlog, but the timeline just works. This was five star. Gorgeous. Stunning. I loved it. I really did. I'm so glad that I read it. Okay, we are on to the final book that I read for my TBR takedown video and that is My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. I have had this on my shelves for god knows how long and that is kind of the point of this TBR takedown thing is I want to get to books that have been sat on my shelves for the longest time and this is one of them. So this is a YA horror kind of thing, I wanna say. Our main character ends up getting in a car crash with her family, her family die. She ends up having kind of like a near death experience, but she survives and she ends up going to this new school after the summer. And at this school, there's some interesting things happening. There's like this ghostly woman in like the sewers <laughs> underneath the school, in like the tunnels underneath the school, who is granting wishes to people, but she might not be all that she seems. She comes across as this good guy. Is she? We don't know. But yeah, this was cute. I gave this three stars. It was cute, it was enjoyable, but it is YA and I'm not really in my YA phase anymore. I don't really like YA anymore because it reads young, which is kind of the point, obviously, as a YA book, but it's just not for me anymore. Um, I do really like horror, but I like scary, disgusting, intense horror, and this is not that. But it's cute. It is cute. And I read it really quickly and I did enjoy it, but it's just not my favourite thing on the planet. But if you like YA and you like horror, I would highly recommend this. I can definitely see people loving this book. But I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, so it's not that bad. <laughs> okay, the next one. <laughs> I did a video in which I read sort of popular TikTok books to see if they were worth the hype. Um, safe to say I don't believe this one is worth the hype at all. And if you've seen that video, you'll know which one I'm talking about. It's Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Now, this is one of the most beloved books I think I have ever seen. This has made the rounds on BookTok, on BookTube, everywhere. For as long as I can remember, I feel like this has been very well known and very well loved. Now, I didn't like this in the slightest. <laughs> And I go into a lot of depth as to why I don't like it. In my reading vlog, if you wanted to watch that, my TikTok reading vlog, I will link it wherever. I am still yet to learn which side it's on. One of these, it'll be linked. I have a very long list of reasons why I didn't like this book. And I'm gonna try and go through it relatively quick fire for you guys, <laughs> in case you don't wanna hear. But I gave this book two stars. I feel like I am more likely to have given it one star, if anything, but that felt really mean, so I gave it two stars. This one follows our main character who ends up going into this small town. She is a runaway bride, she was meant to get married, she ran away from the altar, she ends up in this small town where basically a load of responsibilities are thrust upon her because she has like this dodgy identical twin sister that commits a load of crimes and has a child and it's just like skip town and she's there to like pick up the pieces essentially. And in the first like two seconds we meet our love interest Knox from the bat, like off the bat, hated that man. Did not like that man. He comes across as such a dickhead is the best way I can put it. I apologize, but I just think he was awful. He essentially meets her in a cafe and assumes that she is the evil twin because they're identical, like I said. He assumes that she's the evil twin. So he basically goes off on her about how much he hates her and how annoying she is, whatever. When he realizes that it isn't the evil twin and it is in fact our main character, Naomi, he then, like takes control of her life immediately. He does not know this woman, but he takes control of her life and is like, right, you see this, 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 you're moving in with me, you're doing this. I was like, we don't know you. We don't know you, get away. He gave me the ick from like day one, minute one, minute one he gave me the ick. 
And I just think he was extremely controlling. He was really rude. They obviously form a romance because this is a romance book. Not once is he nice to her. Why, why am I expected to believe that they're in love when he isn't nice to her at all? And they essentially just like fight, have sex, fight, have sex. Um, I was gonna list something else, but that's literally all that happens. That is literally all that happens. I'm being horrible about this book and I apologize, but I just really, really didn't like it. And basically everything in it annoyed me. I don't think the writing was good. I don't think the pacing was good. This is a long book. Nothing happened, apart from one like really dramatic thing at the end, which didn't really work for me. It wasn't good, <laughs> it wasn't good. So I wouldn't recommend it, obviously based off of that review, I would not recommend this. A free will though, if you wanna read it, do what you will, but um, this sucked. <laughs> right, the next book that I read was Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This again, part of my TikTok video, all of these books were in videos, I believe. But yeah, I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I thought I was going to hate this. I really did because I heard very, very mixed things about this. There is a cheating trope in this, um, which isn't a spoiler because I feel like that is very, very widely known about this book. I won't tell you who and when or why, but there is a cheating trope in this. And I went into this going, I'm not gonna like this. I hate cheating in books. I don't like it. It's not redeemable to me. I don't like it as a plot point. I think there's plenty of other things you could do as like a conflict. Anyway, long story short, I gave this four stars, which really surprised me again, because I thought I was going to hate this. But this is a childhood friends to lovers sort of second chance romance. We follow our main character who ends up meeting our love interest when she's like 12 or something. They have beach houses that are next to each other and they form a friendship and you follow two time periods. So one of them is back in the day when they first met and then one is current day when they're meeting again. So you follow their friendship developing as they go through the years as teenagers, a bit of a romance developing when they're younger. And then we skip to, I wanna say like 10 years in the future where our main character is going back into town in order to attend a funeral and they end up crossing paths again and reforming their romance and addressing why their romance essentially didn't work the first time around and I really, really liked it. I thought it was really, really, really cute. Really cute. I do love friends to lovers in books. I feel like it's one of the like cutest scenarios you can get, especially when you see their relationship form, like you saw their friendship develop in the like throwback, I guess, <laughs> sections of it. I don't know how else to word that. I don't know how else to word that, but I really, really liked it. I think it was adorable. I didn't like the cheating trope, which I knew that I wouldn't like. So that wasn't, you know, unexpected, but yeah. That aside, I really liked it. I think the writing was cute. It's a really short book. I wanna say it's like 300 pages. It's a really short book. If you can push past the cheating trope, then I would highly, highly recommend this book. Really, really like this, four stars. I have realized that I've said these out of order because I did actually read Icebreaker before I read Every Summer After. Either way, I also read Icebreaker this month. And I love this, do you see what I mean? I had a really good reading month. Other than things we never got over, I feel like I had a good reading month. Icebreaker was really, really, really cute. I gave this four stars, I loved it. I did prefer this to Every Summer After, so I feel like this is more of like a 4.5 star if I had to be really specific, if I had to be really specific, but I adored this. In this one, we follow our main character, Stassi, who is a figure skater, and our love interest, Nate, who is a hockey player, if you can tell by the cover of this book. Essentially, her partner, her figure skating partner, ends up getting injured, and Nate basically steps in to help her with her practicing and whatnot. He is on the hockey team, they're kind of rivals, I guess, although they never really hate each other. It's not a hate or dislike to love or anything like that. They form a really, really cute romance throughout. And I just really liked this. I feel like it was nice and fluffy and cute and just, it hit the mark, it hit the mark. It did what it needed to do and I really liked it. It is extremely steamy, extremely, extremely steamy. So if you don't like steamy or spicy scenes in books, I would stay clear because it is consistent. <laughs> consistent throughout this book but yeah I really loved this again I gave it four stars and I love this cover <laughs> so this is one of the TikTok books that I do think is worth the hype and I would recommend that you read I feel like it is on Kindle Unlimited I'm like 98% sure that it's on Kindle Unlimited so if you were interested that is a good way to pick it up I really really love this I'm literally now just realizing that I never inputted the book that I read on Kindle Unlimited onto my Goodreads I was about to say right we're all done we're not there's another book that I read but I never input it. So I'm gonna input it right now. I don't know the dates that I read it. So it's gonna come up as though I've read it in August because I am filming this on the 1st of August. Either way, I read Minx by Sophie Lark. I don't know if you can see that. This is on Kindle Unlimited. I ended up picking it up because I just wanted a fluffy, not even fluffy, but like a mindless romance, Kindle Unlimited romance. And I thought this would fit the bill. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. I gave it 2.5 stars. 
maybe a three. It wasn't great but it wasn't awful and I feel like the whole point of this book was essentially to have smut with no plot which it did <laughs> it hit that mark and it was fine this is dual pov so we follow our two main characters whose names i forget i believe it is it's something it's ramses or something like that like some sort of egyptian god name because that is harped on about quite a lot and then is it bow or something like that let me check. I could be lying to your face. Blake. There we go. Ramses and Blake. So Blake is our female main character. She is essentially like, is it an escort? I don't know how you would word this, but she is like a very wealthy escort. So she's an escort to people that are billionaires, essentially. That's how she makes her living. And Ramses is one of these billionaires, right? And they end up, I guess, striking up a deal in which she is his escort. I'm not explaining this well whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not doing this justice at all but essentially they form a relationship because she ends up being his escort and he's like obsessed with her and doesn't want her to work with anyone else or things like that i don't know man it was very very smart heavy so if that's what you want if you want smart with no plot then this one might be for you the writing wasn't bad but there was no plot i feel like they kind of touched on it they were like talking about like stocks and stuff but that does not interest me in the slightest so I feel like I glazed over a lot of that in my brain. <laughs> it's their romance. I feel like, again, this one was like a 0 to 100 kind of thing in terms of their relationship development. It was fine. <laughs> didn't hate it, didn't love it. Gave it 2.5 stars, maybe a three at a push. I can't say I'd recommend it, but if you were looking for something with literally zero plot and like 100 pages of smart, then maybe this is for you. But it wasn't for me. <laughs> it was not for me. That about wraps us up for this month. Here are all of the books that I read this month. That is actually a really cute rainbow, wait. That's kind of in rainbow order, no? Am I making that up? I could be making that up. Anyway, I think it looks cute. Cute little selection here. I had a good month. I had a good month. I didn't have a good month in volume, as I said, but I had a good month in ratings, I think. And I found some really, really great books that I would highly recommend. That is it for this wrap up. I am hoping for next month to be a better reading month. It is a quieter month for me, August. So I should be getting to a lot more books and like the reading vlogs that I have planned kind of necessitate me to read a lot of books. So <laughs> next month will be better. Next month will be better. But yeah, I did want to say, a really quick thank you and I love you guys to everyone because I hit a thousand subscribers yesterday, day before. Boggled, mind boggled. I think you guys are some of the most cute and supportive people that I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. The comments that I get, so adorable. I love you guys. I never thought that I would even get to like a hundred subscribers and here we are. So thank you for being here. Like really sincerely, thank you for being here because <laughs> it made me so happy to see that and I hope you are enjoying all the videos I'm putting out. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any videos that you really want to see because I will take any recommendations in terms of video ideas whatever you want to see I'm sure I can facilitate so if you want anything specifically let me know and I love you guys <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming I'm like I can't believe people are actually watching these videos I kind of started this as like a I don't know let's make some booktube videos I've loved watching booktube for years not thinking anyone would really actually watch them and here we are. Thank you guys. I love you all. I'm going to wrap up this video here. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you stick around and I will see you whenever I next see you.